Welcome to Morning Brew. Start your day in the Word with Pastor Drew McComb each weekday morning at 8 a.m. Central Time. Grab your coffee and your Bible. Here's Pastor Drew. Well, good morning. Welcome to Morning Brew with Pastor Drew. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Drew McComb, pastor here at the famous Little Brown Church. I hope you get your Bible with you and a good cup of coffee. I've got mine's right over here in my uh, Morning Brew mug, so cheers. I'll have that in a little bit. And uh, we're talking all this week about how we can hear the voice of God and specifically how God speaks to us through his word, through the Bible itself. Yesterday, we talked about how the Bible helps us understand what God wants from us and for us. And this morning, we're going to touch on the subject of how the Bible, Bible can help us grow spiritually. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 45 through 47, if you've got your Bibles open, maybe you want to turn there. Deuteronomy 32, 45 through 47. Moses tells the people of Israel the importance of the word of God in their spiritual progress. He says these words. He says, when Moses had finished speaking all these words to all Israel, he said to them, take to heart, take to your heart all the words with which I am warning you today, which you shall command your sons to observe carefully, even all the words of this law. For it is not an idle word for you. Indeed, it is your life. And by this word, you will prolong your days in the land with which you're about to cross the Jordan to possess. The Apostle Peter in his epistle, the first epistle of Peter, verse, chapter 2, verse 2, says this, Like newborn babies desire or long for the milk of the word, the pure milk of the word, so by it you may grow in respect to salvation. The word of God is a spiritual food and drink for us to grow spiritually. And then Jesus, quoting in Matthew 4, 4, quoting Deuteronomy 8, 3, said this, he answered them and said, It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So just as bread is vital to healthy physical growth, so the word of God is absolutely vital to real spiritual growth. And just as food needs to be eaten regularly, digested properly, assimilated in our system, so the word of God needs to be read uh, regularly properly assimilated into our daily lives so that we can grow in our knowledge of God himself and what his will is for our life. The Bible not only feeds us, but it's like water. It refreshes us. It cleanses us. Uh, Psalm 119 verses 9 through 11 says this, How shall a young man keep his way pure by keeping it according to your word? With all my heart I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. Your word I have treasured or hidden my heart that I might not sin against you. And David is saying here, if I hide your, hide your word in my heart, then I know right from wrong and, and, and intrinsically I have an understanding of what is within the context of your will for me and what's not. Thy word have I hidden my heart that I might not sin against you. Ephesians 5 uh, verses 25 through 27 says this, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water of the word, that he might present to himself the church in all its glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. We are washed, if you will, by the water of the word. It keeps us pure. Um, we keep ourselves right by reading the word of God, by knowing the word of God, by hiding it in our heart and living it out by faith. Uh, there was a wonderful uh, story, I'm going to read it to you, about a young believer who was discouraged by his attempts to read and memorize the Bible. He said, it's no use, you know, no matter how much I try to do it, try to memorize it, I just, I just can't, I just forget what I've read. And the wise old pastor said to him this, well, don't be discouraged. When you pour clean water over a sieve, no matter how much, how much you pour, you don't collect much in the sieve, but you're sure, you sure end up with a really clean sieve. And so the more that we take in the word of God, the more our heart is cleansed. As Christians, we sometimes look for other ways that we can accelerate our spiritual life, or the maturing process. Oftentimes at the expense of a thorough knowledge of the word of God, I would caution you. I've had a lot of guys over the years that wanted to become something in the church to be a uh, respected as a pastor, as a teacher, or something else, but they were simply not willing to put the work in to study the Word of God, to understand true doctrine, doctrine, proper doctrine and theology. And there's no shortcut to spiritual growth. We need to be immersed in the Word of God. Uh, one of my heroes of the faith who passed away a couple of years ago, Jack Hayford from Church of the Way in Van Nuys, said this. 
He said the biblical passion for fullness will be first concerned with the word of God itself. Signs or wonders may well confirm its preaching, but the truly passionate will begin with a commitment to knowing the Bible's precepts, God's will and God's ways. Then having taken that stand, let us appro appropriate its powerful promises, God's work and God's wonders. We can't be full of the Spirit without having a fullness in the Word of God. You see, applying God's Word is a process and not just a one-time event. We need to keep doing God's work, work and keep doing God's will by being in God's Word. And so that's what happens when we immerse ourselves in the Word of God, then permanent spiritual change can affect us, can be part of it. So uh, I believe God is not going to open the windows of heaven to the person who keeps his Bible closed. It's as simple as that. Give yourself to the Word of God. Read it, study it, memorize it, meditate upon it, honor it, and most importantly, do it. So God bless you, and we'll conclude this study tomorrow by looking at the, the ministry, the work of the Holy Spirit in this whole process of getting to know and understand the voice of God. So by his grace, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.